SDXL or Stable Diffusion XL 1.0 is the new treat we got from Stability AI. Let's install it and run some tests. So here we can see the release notes, the announcement of the world's best open image generation model, as they said themselves, SDXL. Apparently it's the best image model from Stability AI based on some research and some tests. People prefer this model more. It creates better artwork for challenging concepts and styles of high quality and in virtually any art style. And it's probably the best for photorealism. That was their aim. It won't transfer its feel onto your artwork as some other models do. And it's particularly well tuned for vibrant and accurate colors with better contrast, lighting and so on with native 1024 by 1024 resolution. Now that's a fun one. And apparently it's good at generating hands, text and arranged compositions. We will see about that. It is more intelligent with simpler language. For example, things like masterpiece are apparently not needed anymore. Maybe things like best quality quality, low res, high res, you know, all that good stuff. It is the largest open image model with 3.5 billion parameters in its base and 6.6 6 in refiner. We will talk about the refiner soon and it should work effectively with GPUs with eight gigabytes of VRAM. Now that is some good news for everyone out there who was struggling to generate AI images quickly. There's going to be some fine tuning, advanced control. It's all in the works still with custom lures or checkpoints with specific control net and so on and so forth. But we don't know much about it yet. It hasn't been released to the public. So we're eagerly waiting for that. Now that we've looked at the release notes, let's get started with SDXL. I will walk you through the installation step by step. You can also check out this article I wrote on creatixai.com where you will see a condensed version of this information if you would like to. Link is in the YouTube description. If you have Automatic 11.11 installed already, then you just have to download the SDXL model. You can do it in Hugging Face. Links are in the description. The first is the base model that you can download. And there's also a Laura if you would like to play with that. And then the second one is the refiner model, which is supposedly something you should use after the base model for better contrast, higher quality, and just like refining your image. We will look into using it as well. Then copy it from your downloads and paste it into your stable diffusion web UI folder models stable diffusion. Just paste it here. You know the drill. If you have automatic 1111 installed and you've already pasted the models, you can skip to this part in the video where I'm actually going to be testing some prompts. If not, not to worry. Here is a tutorial on how to install automatic 1111, which is also available as an article on my blog link in the description. Let's dive in. For the first step, we need to install Python. You need it to run the stable diffusion locally. Don't install the latest version as it may not work. I use and recommend Python version 3.10.6. So just open that. All the links are in the blog post and I will also leave them in the YouTube description. So here is the Python 3.10.6. If we scroll all the way down, we can download the Windows installer 64 bit. When you click on it, it should download. When you open it, before you click install now, make sure you select add Python 3.10 to path. Without this option turned on, stable diffusion won't work. Then you can click install now and wait for the process. I won't be doing it since I already have Python installed. Now, step two, we need to install Git. It's a code repository management system. We will need it to set up and update automatic 11.11. So we're gonna go to their official Git for Windows page right here. And then you will just click download. It should download shortly. Now for the settings here, you don't really need to select anything, but make sure the option get from the command line and also from third party software is selected. It's very important. And then just go through the options by clicking next. There's really not much to it. 
All right, you're halfway there. Now we need to clone web UI automatic 11, 11. This is the longest step, but if you follow along, you will do just great. First of all, we need to create a new folder named Stable Diffusion, or whatever you want to call it, anywhere on your computer. But remember, you will need at least 10 gigabytes of space, so choose accordingly. As you can see, I created a new Stable Diffusion folder. It is currently empty, but not for long. We need to click on this path, type in CMD and hit enter. Now this window shows up. Next up, we need to clone the UI. To do that, we're going to go to the automatic 1111 GitHub page. Again, link in the blog post and the YouTube description. And this is the place where all the magic happens. We need to click on the code button and copy this link. Now that it's copied, go back to this open window, click once and type in git clone space and paste the link that you copied by hitting control V. Now that that's there, hit enter. And now all the information is cloning. As you can see on the left, we have a new folder that wasn't there before. Let's double click and now we have all of these files here that will help us run Stable Diffusion. Now for step four, you need to download the Stable Diffusion model. It's the exact same process as I showed you at the beginning of the video. So just follow that and paste the model into the models folder. Guess what? You are all done. You can now begin generating AI images. That wasn't so hard, was it? All you need to do is go back to the original folder, right? Stable Diffusion Web UI, scroll down, and there's this file called webui-user.bat. This is the file that will start your automatic 1111. But if you want, here's a few things you can do before you run it. So if we right click on it, show more options, edit, this is what the user bat file looks like. We can make some adjustments to it. So for one, Automatic 11.11 comes out with new updates quite often and you can update it manually each time or you can set it to automatic updates. I set it to automatic updates and to do that, you have to edit this file. You have to type in git pull right and that will pull the automatic updates and install them for your automatic 1111 if you want new features this is the way to go and then i like to type in pause just so i can make sure i know when an update was done and file save close it and now you can actually run automatic 1111 so here I opened it, it went through the git pull and it says already up to date because we just installed it. Pressing enter to continue and it's going to install requirements, which may take five to 10 minutes to set everything up. So give it time. All the next times you will open it, it will only take a minute or so. So it's just this one time. If it looks like nothing is happening, that's okay. Still walk away from your computer for five to 10 minutes. Just give it time. All right, so I'm gonna close that because I don't really wanna install it. I already have Stable Diffusion installed. It's the exact same as yours. The only difference is I already have some other models installed, some other LORAs. So I press enter and now it's going to start the process. Yours will look slightly different to mine because I have ControlNet installed and other cool things that help me create better AI images, but that's for another video. So here is your local URL link. Control click it or copy it and open it in your browser. Now that we're inside Stable Diffusion, you can see the checkpoint at the top. It's the SDXL Base 1.0 Safe Tensors. And I'm already testing some prompt. Here it is. It looks quite soft to me. It was at 20 steps. So I decided to also try it at 30 steps and the result wasn't much different. It is quite a soft model, it appears, or maybe my prompting isn't quite specific enough. Remember the refiner model we talked about? Well, you can use it in the image to image tab, but I wanted to show you this extension first. If you go to the extensions tab available load from, and then in the search bar, type in refine, 
or a refiner, you will find this extension. So just install it real quick, wait a few seconds, go back to the installed and apply and restart UI. Now, when you scroll down, you will find a refiner tab. You have to enable it, select the model. In this case, it's the refiner model and choose how many steps you want. So the way this works is if you do sampling steps 20, for example, and then you do the refiner 10 steps, then in total, it's going to be 30 steps. But as you will soon see, when comparing the two, the results are insanely different. So on the left is the 30 steps with the base model, on the right, 20 steps with the base and 10 with the refiner. The result is a much sharper, more realistic and more detailed image. We can see all the flowers, all the leaves, the way the sun reflects. There's no floating random flowers anywhere. The hands, the clothing, all of it is quite different and much better in my opinion. And these are the comparison of 20, 30 and 20 plus 10 refined. Now, if we take just the regular 20 steps and then we take it to image to image, select a refiner model instead of the base model, then scroll down, make sure to turn off the override model settings. We don't need to use that and lower the denoising strength to something like 0 0.1, 0 0.3, you know, it depends. In this case, I lowered it to 0.3 click generate. So when we compare the two side by side on the left, we have base plus refiner on the right. We have image to image. We can see some of the details are better in the image to image. We have more definition in the clothing, more realistic hair, more defined flowers and leaves. So in that sense, it does look more detailed and better in a sense. But I really think it's up to the personal preference because I still quite like the first model as well, even though the second one is a bit sharper. But one thing's for sure, using the refiner gives you more definition, contrast and details. Then I tested another prompt, this time of a bird. I wanted to see something different from a portrait. And this is the final result. It is soft. It's beautiful. It's photorealistic in my opinion, and I just overall really like it. Then I went ahead and used the image to image refiner tab with 0.3 denoising strength to see what the bird would look like after the refiner. And this is the final result. You can see it is much sharper. It looks like a different bird. There's more detail, more contrast, more definition, but I still kind of prefer the first one on the bird itself, but the background, I like it more with the refiner. So maybe you could use Photoshop to like photo bash and then run it again through image to image if you wanted the best of both worlds worlds. Once again, a personal preference. Then I decided to run this very fun prompt with a panda wearing a suit at a bar. And I think those turned out quite amazing. I really actually enjoy them. And it's just the base model, but I used Hyres Fix and I think it actually works well with this base model. Anyway, if you look at them, there's a lot of definition, details. Overall, everything looks quite lovely and correct, which makes me really, really happy. So I picked one bear and I ran it through the refinement again at 0.3 denoising strength and then 0.5 denoising strength to see how much it would actually change. And it started to look a bit wonky, weird, and some parts started to make less sense than before. And then I did one more at 0.1 strength and I really quite like it. It turned out rather well. So this is the original image that we had with the base model. Then we have 0 0.3, 0 0.5 and 0.1. I think 0.1 turned out the best of all of them. I then generated some illustrations to see how it acts with that kind of style. And it looks quite nice and colorful and beautiful. Then I tried to do some digital art and it also handled that quite well, even with my evil product. I actually really like the strokes, the textures and the definition in these images. And finally, I tried some oil painting in Renaissance slash impressionistic style. And that also looks quite lovely as if it was painted on a canvas. These are very dreamy. And these are just some of the tests that I ran with SDXL. There is actually quite a lot more, but I don't want to keep holding you forever. I'd rather you go install Stable Diffusion XL and play with it yourself. 
yourself. I would love to know how you use it, what your favorite prompts are. Let me know in the comments. And if you want me to make a particular video about SDXL, if you have any questions, also let me know in the comments below and I'll make sure to do so. Thanks for watching and hey, if you're still here, watch this one next. Keep generating. Cheers!